hey, let's have a little tea time with tea. Let's have a little conversation. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> People. We are, we are up a fucking creek without a paddle. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We have forgotten that we run this nation. We do. We like to bitch and whine and carry on about supposedly tyranny. We, we, are, we are not in tyranny. We wouldn't begin to understand or comprehend freaking tyranny if it popped up, punched us in the nose. Far too many of us would be running around still carrying on about tyranny. Hey, water, how you doing? This is the, this is the thing that we really need to be raising hell about. That we really need to be speaking up about. We are missing. We are allowing this crap to happen. Over and over again. We are allowing people. Even those that we put in office. We are not holding them accountable. And for the life of me. I don't know when we will. Hi Thelma. Yeah, the weapons are the issue. Long duck. You can't. That's like saying you're going to split a child in half. Well, this one's bad, but this one isn't. This one is responsible, but this one isn't. It works together. And how you can't say it's just mental health? It's the ability to have the weapons. Seriously. Come on. Let, hey, Rick, let's put on our big girl and boy panties here. Let's understand cause and effect. Yeah. And that ties, if it was a car, if it was a hammer, if it was a sword, if it's a gun. Cause and effect. You can't walk around talking about, oh, well, you know, it's not the weapons. Well, what did they use? Well, yeah, they used a weapon, but that's not the problem. Well, yeah, they used a sword, but the sword's not part of the problem. So you're expecting anybody, yeah, you said arm the teachers. So, you expect a teacher who may have taught one child, say sixth grade, seventh grade, their brother or sister then comes in, and they're now teaching them, and this is who comes in. You're expecting them to be able to shoot the sibling of someone that they trained? Someone that they guided? Someone that they taught? Do you really think that they could do that? Do you think they could they could do that? Do you think that teacher would not hesitate? Wait, that's Mike's that's 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 Linda's brother. That, that that's Linda's big brother. Heaven forbid Linda is in the class. If her brother or sister comes in there with a weapon, you want her to see her teacher fire on her brother. Then you're not a teacher. You shouldn't be anywhere near a classroom. Seriously. I'm talking real talk. Real facts. For some reason, it's not letting me bring you in, Fathoma. Because I see you're here weird if you could do that in a minute to someone that you taught someone who was your student then there's a problem there because there's that lack of compassion that lack of being able to care 
I don't give a crap. Guess what? Car doesn't do it by itself. It's the person. This is the danger that we are allowing ourselves to fall into. We want to put something up on this shelf. Well, it's not that. It's not that fault. It's not their fault. If they used a knife, if they used a baseball bat, guess what? It's the person and the weapon. Everything else you can hold responsible, but, but this person, but the item that he uses. Hey, 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 lady, how are you today? I think no oh, need to you ask. Made it through. I think no need to ask. I just have to read uh, the headline above. It's so, so sad. And um... it, the, the, the surrender, the copulation to, we can't fix it. Hey, we homeschool our daughter. What about your daughter's friends? What about your daughter's friend that could, could, could get caught up in something like that? Well, our kids at home. No one is safe. I don't believe that anyone is safe, no matter what you do, no matter what you try to do. No one is safe. And that's the pretty sad. This reality is pretty sad. Yeah. I, okay, I you, you, that. You've but mentioned it's a something. Of, Fathom, it, it, to me, it's a matter of trying to make things better. And safer. Which is not wrong. Yeah. We have to try. We have to make things like seem better, even if they're not. You've mentioned something like pretty interesting about it's the people and the weapon. It's not always the weapon, but it's always the people. It's always the people. Like um, yeah, at home, you have knives, you have like dishes, you have whatever, anything that could harm anyone else. So it's not only the weapon, it's anything that a human human hand can use. And I don't know how that can be fixed outside the school system. The school system is to blame. I'm not talking about the states. I'm talking about every state on the whole world. So everyone says it's not the school's problem. It's not the parents' problem. It's definitely not the kids' problem. It's definitely not the students' problem. It is someone's problem. And it's everyone's problem, except the student. Like, I'm not saying that no one should be held accountable, but I do believe that it's mom, dad, uh, community, the school itself, the government, everyone. But we should always exclude the students. Like, you know, everyone is reading the headlines. Every single teenager right now on TikTok, on Facebook, Instagram, anywhere they're reading the the like the rising level of crime and they do not understand the reason they do not understand anything except maybe imitating and that's another dangerous problem M more more aggravated the problem than the actual problem of killing like other innocent students are reading and that's pretty exhausting to us as human beings to read what about the actual student living in the same school who has witnessed the murder, who has, like, his best friend has been killed? I just cannot imagine it. I just cannot. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but we have far too many people who claim, you know, arm the teachers. Like I said, teachers sometimes teach um, several generations from the same family. Could you imagine the, a, a child sitting there and a student from say four years ago walks in with a weapon, and maybe their maybe their cousin or their neighbor is sitting in that class, and the, the they're going to watch the teacher shoot this ex student. No, it's not happening. You know, you know, T. I I always thought about where to start like if if parents cannot start if schools cannot start if no one is taking any initiative to start somewhere how could that possibly stop and arming people is not is not a solution i've seen it in the middle east i've seen it in my own country it is an aggravated problem if everyone is armed it means everyone can be killed at any moment that's not a solution 
I don't know the solution. I'm not suggesting any solution, but but arming people is like aggravating the problem. And sometimes uh, you you need to lock yourself inside your house and then you're going to suffer from mental illness for not seeing people because if you see people, you're going to be suffering from what's going on around. I think we're living in an age of madness. Sometimes I call it like that. It is. It is age of madness, if I want to put it that way. And it's not about the state. It's not about your government at all. If you come to the Middle East, if you go to anywhere in the world, if you go to any country, I'm, I'm not targeting any country, Right. In every place, there are stories that, like, the mind cannot comprehend. And I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm emotional right now, because what's happening there, it has been happening every day, everywhere. And, like, it, it, it is like nothing seems to work out. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. And I can put it this way, Fatima. Those people who talk about arming people, I come from what was con what's considered the ghetto around here. So 20 years ago, we literally had metal detectors at our schools. Every school had metal detectors. Every school had the little thing where you had to put down your bag. It went through the x-ray or they searched it. And then you were allowed in the school. These schools don't have this. That, the same people who are screaming. Arm the teachers, um, have armed guards. These schools don't have the basic, simple metal detectors and something, someone checking bags. Comment creator is just approving what you said. Comment creator just said back then kids didn't have assault weapons. So, yeah, uh, they, I, I don't remember. Weapons. I don't. Yeah. But they had weapons. You're right. They had knives. They had, they had, they had pew pews, not the new weapons. And it stopped them. Yep. No. I can't imagine. I can't imagine the situation. This is the third day, right? This is the third day. Oh, this happens every two, three days. We are we are oh. now numb to it. We are sick of our politicians saying thoughts and prayers. No. Let me share something about my country, Teresa, uh, something like similar to that, but on a different level. Like rarely in Lebanon, you would find such occurrences, but you would find something more terrible than school shooting. Like here, um, I don't remember school shooting happening more often, but we have family crime. Now, pe like family, family members are killing each other and it's happening a lot. Like I don't, I, I was a teacher for six years or five years. I don't remember that happening like every month. No, no, maybe each year one time. But family crimes, it's rising madly. Like, like it's, it's unbelievable. Imagine like you wake up, your neighbor has killed his wife, his daughter, his son. His mm. son has killed his mother. Now this is a different story. I know it's it's totally away from the topic, but mm -hmm. uh, killing killing is increasing day by day. Not just because of the actual killing, it's because everyone is doing it everywhere. So I think people who are watching, I don't know if it's as if they're trying a food recipe. They, they want to try it out. People, how come you try killing out? I never reasoned with that. Mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. yeah, I think my country is a bit safer than the US in one sense. Like, not every day it's happening, but it is happening. I cannot say US is not safe. It is safe on different levels. But here, like, family crime is rising, Teresa. My neighbors, they were killed in one night. He killed, mm -hmm. uh, the father killed the mother and the daughter. And, like, out of nowhere, no one knew anything about that. Like, my close neighbor. Huh. So, yeah, statistically, oh, Lebanon is much safer. Because we're a very small country. Like, we are just two, three million people around. <laughs> yeah, it's it's different here. It it's it, We don't want to face the problem that we have. We want to divide it up. Well, you know, we keep saying it's mental health, yet we refuse to institute ways to help people with their mental health. We refuse, we literally, we have people who will say, well, you know, just because you have a mental health issue, you shouldn't be kept from owning a weapon. Excuse me? 
There are people who literally have gone around and said, well, if if parents mistreat children, they shouldn't have any more children. But if you pew pew somebody or you have mental health issues, well, it's your Second Amendment. Yep, you, nothing can deny you the right to own a weapon. That, that's us. Uh, uh, that, that's America Teresa? right now. Yeah, just a quick question. Like, uh, is it like here? Like, who gives like, who allows people to have weapons? After all, isn't that legalized, or they don't care about whether it's legalized or not? It is legalized. This this person who who did that shooting bought those weapons legally. However, they had a previous mental health problem. There should be stop gaps. There should be wait times. There should be, hey, we need to do a deep check on you. And if they had, then they probably would have discovered that. And yes, that should have kept her from having a weapon. I think the issue here, it's about the law itself. Like, why would people even have weapons? Even if you, like, let's say you're living in the North Pole and you have birds out there and like, you know, animals who might attack you any moment but why mm -hmm. would Teresa or Fatima or anyone why should I have a weapon we actually <laughs> have it in our constitution uh, the second amendment mm -hmm. but the thing is the second amendment was written during the time when this nation first came about and there were uh, there you were intended to be able to help to fight for the freedom of the country to defend your state Right. But now it's gone so far to the other side of, yeah, well-regulated militia. Militia meant you were actually out there fighting and defending your state, not the country, your state. What, what are but they defending? That's the question. This gives me a right to have whatever I want. Like, the question is, Teresa, what are they like? Who are they protecting, and from whom, and from what? Like, what? What's the problem? What's the issue? You will hear people use the term from government tyranny. The last tyranny we had was King George. That was it. The last tyranny, but to make it feel all right, that is what will be thrown out there fighting against a tyrannical government, which we don't have. So we are fighting against something that does not exist. Self-defense, do you need 40 pew-pews for self-defense? No, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, no I don't. I've got my pew-pew. I have one. It is locked in a safety box. I go to the shooting range. Once a month, I break it down and clean it every other month. I'm not afraid of the government. I'm afraid of the idiots who jump at loud sounds. No, Teresa, it's not about the government because the sad story, what you're talking about, it applies to every single country in the world. So it has nothing to do with the, the, with the states, what law is there or what, what the government is doing because if if you if you talk to me or anyone else, it's the same story. So people are the problem when it comes to using weapons. Like uh, you can't have anything at home and not use it. Like as if we are like degrading human beings for not having choices, and then we're saying, "Oh, it is the government. It is the law. It is one. It is two. It's three. It's not. It's not. It's not the government." Like if you know I'm something about my country. Government. Right now in Lebanon, it's falling. We have political, social crisis happening. We have like total corruption, but it doesn't give anyone the right to kill his brother. Like I'm afraid my, my friends are going to be killed by their friends. Not me <laughs> doing it. I'm someone super, like I walk by the law, which is not there. But the thing is, we're giving each other the right to kill by saying it's self-defense. No, it's not. What are the cops for? Do they just take wear suits where they yeah. like just walk around? Come on, cops are for that purpose. And, and cops we, do not and, kill people. 
And they should have kind them. of, um, Fatima, we have kind of um, fetishized owning a weapon, you know, our Second Amendment, as if other countries, you're not allowed to own a weapon. Even in, 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 in Germany, in France, you can own a weapon. We're not special. The only Absolutely. thing the, the only yeah. thing about us is it was put into into the constitution. Oh, okay. Got you. That's it. We 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 fetishized that. I know I'm probably saying that wrong. That one freaking line. What we put in black and white. Other nations take for granted. Yeah, of course you can own a weapon. And people lost their mind here when Australia said, we will not have our children killed again. So, turn in your weapon. We're going to pay you for it. Then you apply to get one. So, in Australia, they, they have a, considered an unwritten Second Amendment. And they have had no problems out of it. People own weapons, um, everything from handguns to rifles. Yep. I'm sorry to say it, Teresa, but look how stupid media is. They just made the whole story about the trans people. Now, regardless what's my stand on the topic, the idea is, who cares about that? People are dead, and now they're talking who did the, the act itself. I'm not I'm not humiliating any gender, just that, that you know. Yeah, I With due respect I to everyone. I, it's not, but, the point is not. Her, whether she was transgender or not. The point was What's the mental the health issue. Yeah. And we won't face that. We will not, we will not for one second say, hold up, wait a minute. We need free counseling. We need to get guidance counselors back in schools. Yes. But we we pulled all of that, gotten rid of all that. Not any counselor, by the way, because you can hire someone, just his title is a counselor, and at the end, he's drinking coffee, smoking, whatever whatever she, he or she is doing, and he's not doing his job. There has to be, like, kind of, like, human awakening, or otherwise, it's the same story, even if we got counsel. Okay, counselor would help the problem, but who, like, how specialized the counselor is makes a difference. We and have... I think we have in, in Michigan, we had a young man who was drawing pictures of headless bodies and, and people laying as if they were shot. And the teacher went to the principal. The principal went to the parents and said, listen, you need to get some help for this, this boy. You've got to get some help for him. The mother, the father blew it off. Nah. Um, he's fine. We, we'll, we'll talk to him when he gets home from school. They said, you should take him home now. And they said, no, nah, no, nah, we want him to stay the whole day. Not an hour and a half later, he shot up the school. Okay. Parents, I know my child better than you do. Even though the teacher's going, look, these are the pictures he's drawing. He, oh, he needs help. And for them to say, nah. Ashton, if you have anything against the host, please join the live and defend your point. Just don't drop any comment. Um, I prefer if anyone has any comment, just to join and talk. Typing wouldn't help much. Uh, host, what did he shoot up the school with? A weapon! A gun, Ashton! I don't understand why you're not getting that. Boogeyman, when you come in trying to um, bring up unnecessary bullcrap, yes, you will be shown to the door. Goodbye. I have no patience. Not today. No, do not take guns away from the citizens. Big Tim, I like my pew pew. I don't want anybody to take it away from me. I'm a responsible gun owner. Like, when would you use it if you have a gun, if you're armed? Like, when do you think is the right time to use it? Uh, 
Well, I did use one when I was about 17 years old. It was my dad's. Uh, both my parents were working at night and someone broke in. Me, my brother, and my sister were all upstairs in bed. And I heard like a loud crack because what they did was um, bust in the back door. Yeah. And they came in the back door and started packing up stuff. The TV, the stereo, all of this. And one of them, they um, started passing stuff out the front door. And the guy, what happened was, I heard them talking about they were going to, well, I wonder what they got upstairs. And mm -hmm. I, the way my stairs came down, there's a small landing. And then you go down another steep. As he went out the door, I heard him say, I'm going to check upstairs. Before he had a chance to turn around, I pew pewed him in his butt. That's I, brave. I, you said the family. Yeah. He took off all of his friends. There was stuff scattered all over where they just hopped in the car. What they had, they dropped. They, they hopped in the car and took off. That is the only time that I've actually ever used a pew pew on a person. Look, someone but, mentioned like something. Like I said, my little brother and sister were upstairs. Huh. And I, when I heard him say, check her upstairs and see what's up. No. Mm -mm. You were 17, right? Just to recall. I was 17. That's pretty interesting. That was my, that was actually my dad's. Uh -huh. uh, there, there's a lady called me girl. It's 757. Uh, there's another type of we weapons, which is the medicine, I think. And that's something more dangerous than the weapon itself. Poisoning someone or over overdose. That's that's something pe few people would talk about. And that's really dangerous among teenagers, especially. Mm -hmm. They, they would think it's a prank. Yeah. Let's record a TikTok. Let's have fun. And at the end, their, their friend is dead. Poisoned. Yeah, 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 yeah. They TikTok has done a few things, but that originated over on Facebook. But that, but I have no problem with people owning weapons. It's the lack of responsibility, the lack of being willing to hold that instrument accountable for what the person has done with it. Yeah. We cannot make, make the, you know, it's the people, it's the people. It's the people with the weapon. It's the people with a baseball bat. It's the people with a crowbar. Okay? So we got to, we got to, we got to, we got to, we got to understand. This has got to stop. This has freaking got to stop. And the only way it stops is when we stop letting them get away with thoughts and prayers. No. That's a baby that's not going to continue their life. It is a child. Not, not, a, not a fetus. Not a zeitgeist. It's a child. Thanks for having and me, T. I think I'm good to go. Thanks for having me, T, uh, as usual. And definitely invite me to every live. Uh, I love such topics which has nothing to do with politics and countries and sensitive issues. This is something a human, and I love your perspective on stuff. So thanks for having me. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you so much for hopping in. I do appreciate Bye-bye. I just want people to understand we have lost the ability. It's gone. Oh, okay. Hey, it's Wednesday. It must be another two children. What's happening, T? Hey, Swerve, how you doing? I'm doing okay. I, you know, I've been bouncing in and on lives all day where um, <clears throat> people have talked about this subject, uh, this, that, and the other thing. You know, the one thing that I that I haven't heard from some of these uh, gun enthusiasts, I guess you could say. Uh -huh. Not one of them have advocated for the children who've lost their lives. Not a single one. They want to start trying to break down the definition of things and the grains of the bullets and why this rifle is called this and who didn't use it for that. And like, that doesn't matter. It, it, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care what type of firearm was used. I never have because they're all dangerous. Oh, yeah. I mean, let's 
let's just be real and call a spade a spade. They're all dangerous. Okay? So I don't care what type mm-hmm. of firearm was used. But the fact that we keep having to have these discussions. We had this same discussion about 10 or 12 days ago when a mass shooting happened in Colorado. Before then, it was Uvalde. You know, we keep having the same discussions. And it just pains me that everyone is sitting there going, now, now, and I can't remember the Senate bill um, or the congressional bill to address mental health within this country, but 205 Republicans voted against it. And now it's the men- it's mental health in this country. It's this, the mental health this, this of- bill. This yeah. bill right here. Yeah. 205 it- Republicans voted against that. Because they said they had too much pork. And T, one thing that I've heard you talk about vehemently is if there's something in a bill that you don't like, you go back and you negotiate. You Thank get you. it taken out. They just completely say no and they walk away from it. Here's, here's a trick they use. Oh, there's too much fluff in the bill. Do you ever hear them fucking say what is in the bill that they are against specifically? Nope. nope. The- they will throw that shit out there expecting you to carry the water. Well, there were things in the bill that weren't right. Like what? Really? What was it? They'll, they'll never what tell you it? what. And no matter what, what TV station they get in front of, they'll never tell you what. They'll just say we had too much pork in the bill. Well, did you try to negotiate and get that removed? No. Did you try to have something else added to compensate for what you may have wanted? No, we just voted it down. Okay, so no. you didn't even you didn't even try. You, you just voted fight. against it. You didn't freaking fight to get yeah. substance abuse for fentanyl addicts. You didn't fight for mental health. Nope. No, they and 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 to them, you got to understand that bill it had additional funding in there to fund every school district across the country with a mental health advocate. Every school district across the country, it had funding in there to actually pay those mental health advocates overtime. It had funding in there to where they could put additional guidance counselors on site. It had funding in there to where they could actually open up youth centers or try to open up youth centers so so that children could have a place to go instead of getting involved in gang violence. That was the pork. Well, why do we need to open up community centers? What? But they always sit and talk about the children. And you're not going to take away my firearms. And we need to protect the kids. But you're not taking away my firearms. We want to put, put veterans in schools. But you're not taking away my firearms. We want to arm Miss Davis, the 67-year-old art teacher, who's three years away from retirement, who these people have sat there and vilified the hell out of these teachers. They're indoctrinating my kids. They're teaching them critical race theory. But now you want some teacher, you're perfectly okay with giving them a firearm to protect your little child from not learning the true history of this country. Give me a break with this garbage. How do you, in one breath, downgrade and denigrate teachers, and then in the next breath, here's a pew pew. I want you to stand between my children and whoever comes through that door. Yeah. I don't like you. I disrespect you, but I want you to stand yep. between. Them. I don't like you. I disrespect you. I don't want you teaching my child critical race theory. I don't want you trying to indoct my child, but you better protect their life when the time comes. Are you kidding me? You really think I'm going to stand up for your kid after the way you treated me? I'm sorry, but I can't. I can't do it. I'm. A, you know what? Oh, oh, that's the Johnsons boy. That's the Johnson. You know what? They wrote several emails saying that I in, I was indoctrinating their child. Uh, you know what, little Johnson boy? Why don't you go out there in that hallway and see what's going on? And that may seem cruel. That may seem, mm-hmm. but but what's to say these teachers aren't sitting there thinking about that right now after they have been just vilified and accused of some of the most heinous crap in the world. But you you're okay with giving teach. them a firearm. You don't want me to teach. 
You don't like how I teach, but you want me to act as a bodyguard for you to give me a weapon and say, now, go stand between them and whoever comes you, through that door. Exactly. You don't trust me to teach, but you trust me to you trust me to protect your child. I can't teach. I can't teach, but I can protect. Get out of here. Get out of here. I'm not buying it. I, I'm just not buying it. And then they, they, they come up with this notion, um, well, we need to just put our veterans in these schools. And you do have some of us who I'd be willing to go and do it. Yeah. I'd be willing to go out there and, and lay my life down again if I needed to. But one, the money's got to be right. If the money ain't right, I'm not stepping in there. Two, when you start talking about arming teachers, I mean, teachers have to go out and buy their own freaking school supplies. Are they going to buy their own pew pews too? They have to, then they're going to have to go and buy their own firearm. They're going to have to pay for their own training. They're going to have to pay for their own qualification course every year. But no, the teachers want to do this. Not all of them. And if you if you do have some teachers out there who are willing to do it, great. That teacher needs to undergo a psychological evaluation for at least two months. Yep. That teacher needs to be certified for at least a week on the firearm that they're going to be carrying. And that teacher needs to understand how to check line of sight so they don't I end up firing at the wrong person. Yep. And here's the thing. People keep saying, what was in that bill? Why don't you go read the freaking bill? Stop wanting to be spoon fed. Call your people who, who you pay. You paid their paycheck. Hey, did you debate? What idea did you come up with? Did you come up with an alternative? No? Why not? And that's the thing. They didn't debate. They didn't try to push back on anything. They just voted it down, said, no, nope, we're not going along with this. And I don't care if what I don't care what was in that bill. I wouldn't have gave two shits if there was something in that bill that did a scientific study to the tune of five billion dollars to try to figure out if dandelions had anything to do with the population growth of rabbits in this country. I don't care. Uh, someone said they're all for single issue bills. Here's the problem. We are a big damn country. We have a lot to get done. And we have people in office who take off for Thanksgiving, Christmas, two months in the summertime. We yeah. would never get anything done. If we did one bill at a time. Yeah, how many how many times throughout the year do we hear this garbage about, oh, we got to hurry up and get this done because Congress is going to be out of session for the next month and a half. Wait, what? You mean I'm paying these people almost $200,000 a year for a month and a half long vacation? Yeah. I don't even get that. Hey, one th uh, 1138. Glad they turned the bill down. Federal government has no business in this. Keep it local. It would be local. Damn, it would be federal funding for local services. Tell me you don't know about gov how government works. Without telling me, you don't know how government works. They, 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 they either willfully ignorant or just don't care. Because we can, we can sit here and talk about how much federal funding the government, the federal government, gives to the local states on a yearly basis, and how that oh, yes. money gets misappropriated. Like I don't know, K. Ivy using COVID relief money to build a prison. You want, you want to know? Someone said you can't hide issues in a single bill. Go read S-686, the TikTok bill. Read all the way down where it says if they pass this shit, if you got a ring camera, they can take control of it. If you have inside cameras inside your home, they can take control of it. Yep, they can anything. take control, control of your internet feed. So that's one bill with all these little tricks and traps all in it. It ain't just about TikTok, boo-boo. Yep. 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 But I, I'm just sick of hearing this. You know, they, like I said, T, well, an AR-15 isn't really this and it's not really that. And this is the grain of the bullet and this is the size of the jacket. 
and then you got the magazine which holds this many. Nobody cares. The fact that they say this is a mental health issue. Now, all of a sudden, it's a mental health issue. Wasn't a mental health issue back in January. But they always want to come up now at the last minute and go, well, this is a mental health problem now. Then why in the blue hell do you want to make it easier for the mental health issue to get their hands on a damn firearm? Why do you want to make that easier? When I when I had to go through a special process, T, when I bought my first firearm here in Ohio, <coughs> Because I checked on there, on my application, that I had mental health issues. They said, be specific. I said, PTSD. I had to have three appointments with a psychotherapist before they would license me and authorize me to purchase a firearm. That's what I had to have. Okay? And I'm perfectly okay going through that process. You know why? Because I'm not out there committing any violent crimes. I'm not out there trafficking children or drugs. And I would be more than happy to go see a psychotherapist just so that psychotherapist could potentially help me with my issue. (coughs) So why do we want to continuously make it easier for the mental issue to get their hands on firearms? I don't understand that. I just don't. Oh, well, you're not going to infringe on my right. What about the rights of those children and adults to live? Yep. And I was just in, I was just in another live before I came into yours. You know, if Uh, if hold hold on, Duray has a low IQ and I'm starting to get a headache from him. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, no worries. I was, I was in a live team before I came into your live. Where some dude was sitting there screaming about how he was pro Second Amendment and he knew how to dress a sucking chest wound. And if teachers would have had this training, uh, maybe they could have saved somebody's life. Or if the children would have had this training, they could have potentially saved someone's life. Oh, who's going to pay for it? The wait, teachers wait can't, wait the teachers wait, can't wait, even wait, get wait. their own school supplies. Swerve, swerve, swerve. Hold up. Hold up one quick second. Did this ass had actually say, teach children how to handle a sucking chest wound? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's first aid training. We can't even teach our kids how to cook in school anymore or how to balance a checkbook. But now we want to give them triage, combat medicine, uh, first aid tactics. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. The asinine, it, it, it's just asinine. It's just completely and totally asinine. It really is. We have become these extremely <laughs> spoiled children. I want it. I want it now. And nobody else matters. Yeah. And you know what? It, T, you've heard me say this a hundred times, if not a thousand. They sit here, they vilify these teachers. They sit here and they, they just make these wild accusations about how these teachers are indoctrinating their child and teaching them to be drag queens and indoctrinate. And they're not at all concerned whether or not their child is going to come home at the end of that day. None, Not a single one of them. You know why? Because it ain't smacked them right in the face yet. And unfortunately for them, that smack in the face is going to be their own child not coming home that day. That's what that slap in the face is going to be. And you're right. We, We could write laws. We could write and pass laws until we're blue in the face. Because I've always said you never know what people are capable of until they actually do it. Right? You could have another Timothy McVeigh out there. Sure. You could have another Dylan Klebold out there. Or uh, who's the other guy? Roof. Yeah, you, mm-hmm. could, you could easily have another one out there. And where yeah. there's a will, there will always be a way. And at the end of the day, they will always say the same thing about each and every one of them. Here was their manifesto. Here's what they posted online. Here's what they said. 
Here's where this boy tried texting his parents, the Michigan uh, shooter. Here's where he mm-hmm. tried texting his parents and his mother never texted him back. And then they sat in the office with him that morning while he had the firearm in his backpack. And they said, no, I'll let him finish the day out at school. Right? Mm-hmm. But it's yep. always it, it it's it's always somebody else's fault other than the parents other than the firearm it's the mental <laughs> health problem but they want to make it so much easier for the mental health issue to get their hands on the firearm now this yo-yo right here swear this yo-yo this yes, is ma'am. a senator from Tennessee who actually someone said in the comments uh they they homeschool their students so Okay, you homeschool your student, your daughter. As if your daughter daughter does not engage with people from the neighborhood. I saw that Jackaloon on TV this morning. So so what? His daughter may know somebody. Mommy and Daddy, um, they told me Mike got shot at school. Why did that happen? What are you fucking telling your kids? When she comes to you with that, what do you even? What do you think? What do you say to your children when they've survived this? What are you going to say to your child? Like, look at what happened at the uh, Michigan University. There was a girl there at the Michigan University. This was the second time she had been involved in a mass shooting. Yep. Statistically, damn near impossible, but there she was. Right. What do you say to your child after something like that? Like, I, I couldn't even imagine. I can't even imagine. But it's all, like I said before, and I'll, I'll keep saying it, mental health. They want to claim mental health is now the problem. Yet they voted against mental health measures, and they still want to make it easier for the mental health problem to get their hands on a firearm. They won't do anything about it, nothing. Oh, well, just just because someone might be bipolar, they're not allowed to own a firearm. Yes. What was the number of the bill? Um, I'm sorry. You're going to have to Google that bill. The um, the um, the um, substance abuse and mental health bill. Uh, Doug, Doug, go it. It'll pop right up. It yeah. died. It did not get to go. It didn't go through. And can, and can we just kind of like step back for a moment? Because you have some people who don't care about anything but their firearms. That's all they care about. That's all they'll ever care about. And they come up with these BS notions about a tyrannical government or I need my AR-15 to protect myself in my home. Okay, what what kind of shady, drug-addled, trafficking neighborhood do you live in where you are constantly worried about your home being broken into? I would really love to know so I can stay the hell out of your neighborhood. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I was in a live the other night, and the guy said, yeah, I own this gun and this weapon and this automatic. And, da, da, da. and somebody asked, so when was the last time a home was broken? Was your home broken into or a home right immediately? Four houses in any direction around me. When was the last time? The guy was like, what do you mean? He said, you got to freaking armory when is the last time anything happened in your yeah. community yeah and he couldn't say a darn thing when when we <coughs> the <coughs> the last neighborhood that my wife and I lived in it was a pretty large subdivision right we had one firearm just one and I ain't going to lie to you, it was a cheap firearm. I can't even remember what the name of it was because um, I sold it as soon as I could. When we moved into this neighborhood that we live in now, um, you know, making a little bit more money, doing a little bit better. So we decided to buy new ones. My wife got something that she felt comfortable with. I got something that I was definitely comfortable with. You know where those firearms are at right now? Locked up. It, Because we don't have any kids in the house. Mine is in the drawer of my nightstand. My wife's is in the drawer of her nightstand. There's nobody in the house but us. Okay? But when we lived in our other neighborhood, 
when our son was still at home, we took him to the range. We taught him responsibility of weapons. And then our son went on to become a gunner's mate in the U.S. Navy, a weapons specialist. Mm -hmm. Right. Because he he and myself and my wife, we have respect for what these things can do if they fall into the wrong hands. Okay, These people don't care how in the blue hell, how in the blue hell does a six year old get their hands on the firearm and shoots their teacher? Mm -hmm. That's not a mental health problem. That is a lack of parental responsibility, pure and simple. Oh, no, 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 no. The child does have developmental issues, which puts even more responsibility on the parent that you didn't have that locked down. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and this is strictly an American problem. There are no... There are no mass school shootings that goes on anywhere else in this world. Two, three if it, times a week. If, if it does, it's incredibly rare. Maybe once a year, maybe once every five years. Hell, Australia, maybe once every 10 years. Yep. Right? Yeah. But yep. it, it just it just pains me. People sit here and advocate for the guns. And they'll say, well, I'm pro-life. Okay, well, what about these children who lost their lives? Yeah, but you can't infringe. Then don't tell me you're pro-life. Don't Thank don't you. even try it. Thank you're not you. pro-life. You're pro-firearm. Until you've heard me again, you've heard me say it dozens of times. There are three things in this country that have more rights than a woman. A firearm, a fetus, and a corpse. Yep. You yep. tell me That's how it, how an inanimate object has more rights than a human being does. And then, oh, well, don't infringe on my rights. What about your rights infringing on the rights of others to simply live? What about that? I said I've only shot one person in my life. I have only pew-pewed one person. And that was somebody that broke into our house. And if if they had just taken what was downstairs and left, wouldn't be no need for me to pull the trigger. But Mm -hmm. when I heard them say, Go check what's upstairs. Oh no! Before right. before, before Sweden had a chance to turn around and come back in the door, I shot him in the butt. Yeah, one of the most horrible experiences in my life, and I was oh, yeah. carrying it. Oh. When T, I, I carried an MP5 and a Desert Eagle nine millimeter. Okay, a thirteen-year-old kid ran up behind me and shoved a butcher knife right through the back of my leg, and I spun around and I put three bullets right in his chest. Didn't even think twice about it. So I know firsthand what these firearms can do. Doesn't matter if it doesn't matter to me if it's a nine millimeter, a twenty-two, uh, AK forty-seven, uh, seven point six two round, or a five five six round. It doesn't matter. The fact that we are going to be okay, they want they they'll say, "Well, we need to put we need to throw more guns out there." The more firearms we have out there, the less likely people are to do stuff. No, that's not true because now you're in a, like a okay corral shootout type situation. Yep. Who yep. the hell wants to be in the middle of that? And who in the hell wants their children in the middle of that? And, just, and I'm sorry, but my fellow gun owners. In case y'all forget, during the wild, wild west, there were literal times when you came in, you had to turn over your weapon. They locked it up until you left. So gun rules are not new. Democrats did not create gun rules. They were called the foundation of civilization, being civilized. T, I'm, I'm sitting here right now. I kid you not. I'll turn on my camera and show them to you if you want me to. No, no. We can't but do that. I'm I'm sitting here right now. I have two hog heads soaking in brine. So I can make me some hog head cheese tomorrow. They're in, they're soaking in brine. How do you how do you how do you think those heads ended up in this brine right now? Wait, 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 wait. You cannot eat that. That will drive your blood pressure through the ceiling. I can't eat what? You can't eat hard head cheese. Oh, sure I can. No, 
it's yes. pork. I know it's pork. I haven't eaten. The only thing that I've had to eat this week. Um, let me see. What's today? Wednesday. I had uh, I had some barbecue spare ribs, or I had two barbecue spare ribs from a local Chinese shop. That's what I had for dinner tonight. Last night I had a bag of vegetables. Monday night I had a bag of vegetables um, with no salt, just lightly buttered. Um, and I'm I'm taking uh, I've gotten my new medication. And so far, my blood pressure has actually been doing pretty good. My blood pressure. Yeah, you're just going to challenge that shit, aren't you? Well, I'm not trying to challenge it, but I've been jonesing for, I've been jonesing for some hog head cheese, a little bit of sauce, uh, and the hog heads. I didn't have to pay for them; they just gave them to me because they can't sell them. They don't sell them because of the way that they run alive. Okay. So they just okay. they just said, "Hey, if you want to come and get them, they're ready." And I, I went up there and. They're soaking in the brine, but it's not anything. I'm not going to eat a lot of it. I'm going to try to freeze dry some of it and ship it up to my mother. Uh huh. Cause she ain't, <laughs> she ain't had none in quite some time. Yeah. I ain't had none in two years with my blood pressure. I haven't had any. The last time I had some, I think I was 15 or 16. I mean, I've tried it in various uh, places and people's homes, but it just, it just didn't taste right. So I said, you know what? Let me have a run at this. Okay. And okay. All I, all I came I, out of pocket. Yes, we drifted off into food there for a moment. Well, all I came out of pocket for was the vegetables that I needed. The, the hog that was free. Okay. So, okay. So I'm good with that. Okay. But yeah, this this whole notion of uh, the these asinine ideas of let's put veterans in there, you just assume that you have thousands of veterans all across the nation who want to go and put themselves back in harm's way for very little pay, if they get paid at all. Because I know some yeah, school yeah. districts have already asked for veterans um, to be and school not services officers, and they're asking for that on a voluntary basis. Mm -hmm. Right. There is one veteran on this TikTok who um, is retired, and he did not say put veterans inside. He said put veterans outside. He said, because a veteran can spot something that's hinky faster than, almost the same way a cop can. Doesn't look right. Something doesn't feel right. I can tell you, I can tell you right now, if you got a veteran who spent any time in Kandahar, Afghanistan, Iraq, Kuwait, we're going to look at everybody suspiciously. Mm -hmm. If we ain't never seen you there before, you're a suspect. Mm -hmm. You are a definite suspect. And uh, at one point, you know, I, because I, there's an elementary school, you go out of my driveway, you turn right, elementary school, right? I was like, you know what? Maybe I could just ride my bike around the school for a couple hours a day and, and see if there might be any shenanigans going on. But it's such a quiet neighborhood. It's built, the school and the neighborhood are all built inside of a golf course. There's oh. nothing that goes, like I live in some place, if we hear any kind of sirens, you know something has horribly gone horribly wrong. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I understand. But it's the same with teachers that someone was saying PTSD. Like I said, in oh, yeah. some schools, in some schools, um, the well, Tom went to this school and went to the um, the seventh or the eighth grade. Then his younger cousin or sister comes along. Maybe Tom has some kind of psychotic break and comes back. And that student, that cousin or, or neighbor's kid is in the same class as the teacher that taught him. That teacher is liable to hesitate. I know this kid. I, I taught this kid. And the kid next door is the neighbor. I know they know each other. How am I going to then pew-pew him with this kid here? See, that's where... I, I got to be honest with you, T. I, and I, I hope you don't think any less of me. But if if I'm your teacher, and I've been, and this maybe this is just my training, but I mean, if my own sister was running at me with a firearm, trying to do me harm, I'm putting her down. Mm -hmm. I'm putting, and and that may be that may seem like a cruel thing to say, mm -hmm. but at some point. It it 
it just becomes it just becomes my life over your life. And do I want to go home? The only way I can go home is I have to put you down. But you got a certain level of training that a teacher does not have. Teachers are taught to engage, be compassionate, to care, to want to fill up that vessel with knowledge. <laughs> you have the military side. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. And it's it's just it's just the way that that I think that's where my training um, and what I did, you know, it. I mean, I'm at I'm at a point now. If somebody were to break into my home, I got no problems putting two in your chest and one in your head, and I'll be sitting here eating a cheeseburger by the time the police show up to clean you up. <laughs> and that may seem yeah. cruel, but that's all I know to be when my life or the life of my loved ones is in danger. Teachers are right. not going to have that same mentality if they have never <laughs> been in combat, you know? You can teach them to fire, but you can't teach them to turn that off to yeah. do what needs to be done. Yeah, and 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 the hardest part of it is living with the guilt. There are There are millions of veterans out there who live with the guilt of what they had to do. And that guilt is... They took someone's life. Now, at the time, it was either it was either kill or be killed. That's the plain right. truth of it, right? Mm-hmm. But as time goes by, we start to live with a certain amount of survivor's guilt. And I have survivor's guilt. I, I suffer from it every day. Every night when I lay my head on the pillow, I see those faces. You know, a teacher, someone just fresh out of college, just finished doing all the substitute qualifications and then getting into a school and the school says, Hey, here's your firearm. We're going to get you set up. You're going to go to training for this, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden the teacher is in the classroom and they go, well, wait a minute. That's the Johnson's boy. Holy shit. That's my name. Oh my God. What do I do? What do I do? Wait, that, and, and I'm sorry. Do you expect these teachers, if they go through all of this trauma, having to fire on, a neighbor's child who is the one that came in. Do you expect them six weeks later to go back to sitting in front of students in the class? No. And it to be okay? And then and then no. you have to think about the parents' reaction. They're gonna be all up in the teacher's business. You took my son's life. Well, your son was trying to take the lives of several of my students. I don't care. You could have talked to him. No, that ain't how this works. And I it's mean, like- really, could you imagine Could you imagine the kids in school come back six, eight weeks later? Yeah, that's Mr. Hendricks. Yeah, my the guy that lived, the boy that lived up the street came in and he took him down. Do you think he has the weapon on him now? Yeah. Should we ask him questions? Yeah. Yeah, and then and then hopefully you got one smart kid in there who goes, you know what? Maybe we should just leave him alone and stick to today's assignment. Yeah, yeah. Because if he took yeah. him down, he ain't gonna have no problem with taking one of us down, you know. But this this whole Ted says I've said before, we're the most heavily armed nation in the world, yet our citizens are the least safest, especially mm-hmm. our children, yeah. and. This these notions that they come up with of, well, we'll just harm the teachers. That's not going to work because not every teacher is going to want to do it. If you do have a teacher that wants to do it, fine. Let them go through the proper training. Let them understand. Let them have psychological counseling readily available to them should they ever need it before or after. Yeah. Preferably yeah. before. Absolutely. Okay? And oh, yeah. Absolutely. let them go through that. If you have veterans in this country, not taking anything away from my brothers and sisters. If you have veterans in this country that want to do it, go for yeah. it. Let mm-hmm. them undergo psychological training. Let them have a refresher on the weapons that they will be issued. Get them mm-hmm. as prepared. And you issue them things like body armor and body cams. 
so that they're not just walking into a situation completely blind trying to figure okay. out you issue the the proper equipment yep. and it needs to be paid for whether it's a teacher school resource officer veteran whoever that needs to be issued by the school district under the guise of a certified qualified range master that's who needs mm -hmm. to do it you cannot have a school board of superintendents sitting there going oh well uh you know, we're going to issue a little snub nose 22 uh, that's only got five rounds in it. And uh, that should be enough to put down any threat. No, they need to be issued proper equipment. They need to be properly trained and maybe even go through a little bit of tactical combat training if they've never oh, done yes, it before. Absolutely. absolutely. You need to go to the firing range and you need to be able because you have to be able to tell, is this just a child running or is this someone running to attack you? Absolutely. You need because, to because all it's going to take is one teacher to accidentally shoot a child that was just running and they're going to be up on murder. Yep. And any, any firearms instructor will tell you you only got a few, you only have a few seconds to identify that target. And then you have to, in that, in that few seconds while you're identifying that target, you have mm -hmm. to be able to identify your line of sight to make sure you're not going to put a round through the target and then hit somebody behind them. Yep. You know, and that's, like I said, if you got veterans out there who are willing to do it, especially combat veterans, have them undergo the same psychological background testing as I had to go through everything, the whole nine yards, and you put them in there. And maybe, just maybe, just maybe, if these people knew that there was a combat veteran in that school who was just as armed as you are with no training, right? You're going to take mm -hmm. an armed combat veteran who has been trained to the tooth against someone who has not been trained at all. Yeah. You have to stop and think for a second, what kind of chance do I really have against someone like that? Or yeah. a retired police officer. Or and I'm going to repeat and, and swear, I'm going to repeat this. Back during the heyday of the crack epidemic and sometime after that, inner city schools had they they had metal detectors. Some of them also had the little x-ray machine. Mm -hmm. Where you were only allowed to bring in a small backpack. Backpack <coughs> went on, backpack went through. They they still as a backup would search it. And yep. shootings went down. Because I don't know if y'all know this, but there was a certain time where in the city schools, they literally had gunfights in schools. Yeah. They stopped that shit real quick by throwing up metal detectors. Yep. They were at two different doors. In the morning, you could come in both doors. During the day, you were only allowed to go in and out one door. Yep. Why? Yep. Why? Well, this when, is, you're reinventing the wheel, but they're when, not using it. When I was in school, there was there was one incident. Um, two people got into a fight. And we had this area outside of the high school called the Surge, right? Mm -hmm. This is where a lot of kids congregated on lunch hour. And we had an incident. Uh, two kids got into a fight, and one of them started shooting at somebody. Mm -hmm. And they ran out into the Surge, and they, they basically fired, and our star quarterback was done, mm -hmm. right? And so we really didn't know what to do. And this was back in the 80s. Very rare incident. Okay. But even then, we didn't get metal detectors. But when, our son, did. when our son started going to school uh, here in uh, Taze Valley, they had metal detectors. You had one way into that school and one way out unless a fire broke out and the, the fire doors, they were all electronically controlled. So they were, they were electronically locked, which meant nobody could actually come into one of these doors from anywhere outside the school. You had one way in and one way out for all the students. Yep. 
Mm-hmm. If there was a fire, they would hit that button and unlock all of those doors and people could get out in case of that. Yep. Yep. And, um, nowadays, we have things like bulletproof glass. We have metal detectors. We have electronic controls. We have ID badges for the teachers, the, the FOB that's built into their badge to get them right. out of certain areas. Hell, even our police stations have those. And I'm sorry, I don't really know too many more heavily armed places than a police station. Um, right, right. And they still have that. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you. Did you hear about the mass unaliving at the Air Force Base? No. Hold up. Let me pull this up on my iPad real quick. because I, I don't think it was today. I believe it was a couple days ago. Oh, shit. I'm going to need to go lock him up. Let me... Um, Hold Why up. are you doing that? I'm pretty sure I still got this open. Mm-hmm. I really hope I did not close this. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to let, um, I think I saw Lady Wolf, Lady Blind Wolf. I'm going to let her in. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm I'm the, this. Oh, my gosh. People. Okay. okay. Here we go. I found it. Okay, so. Okay, you go, you go ahead, Swerve. So you going to turn your camera on? Uh, well, it, it's an article. I can read it to you. Okay. Army identifies Command Sergeant Major who was killed alongside three children. This was from 23, March 23rd. Uh, the Army has identified Command Sergeant Major Carlos Evans as one of four victims unalive Tuesday in a shooting at another Sergeant Major's home in Sumter, South Carolina, just nine miles from Shaw Air Force Base. Uh, the suspect, Charles Slacks Jr., was an Army veteran and civilian worker at the base and the ex-husband of Army Sergeant Major Aletha Holliday, uh, who was the chief culinary manager at the base. So you basically had a jealous ex-husband who went in, unalive the Sergeant Major, the wife, three children, one of which was his stepdaughter. That was just two days ago. I'm, I'm sorry. If you want to go, go. You do not need to take an entourage with you. My email. Oh, the email frenzy did not go well. <laughs> Girl, I had 81,000 uh, rejected emails in my email this morning. Oh, my God. It did it did not go well at all. No, okay. We're gonna leave it alone. We're gonna leave it alone. <laughs> Blind Lady Wolf. Yes, ma'am. You are up. <laughs> Sorry. How many of our government officials have ever taken free free NAMI classes? Free what? NAMI classes. Oh, no, 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 no. That That's mental health. Right. Pull yourself up by your bootstrap. Just curious. And then give them thoughts and prayers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> What's a NAMI class? It's um, basically classes that you can take where you're educated on all various um, mental health disorders. Oh. No, doesn't never... make you a doctor to diagnose anybody, but it does. It's it's basically mental health awareness. Yeah, so that you can educate yourself on on the mental health disorders, and they're well, free. But uh, how many of our government officials have taken those classes? No. It, it basically helps you to better understand, like, um, I, I've always thought police officers, it should be mandatory 
because we have too many police officers who don't recognize that someone may be autistic. Mm -hmm. They they just react as if they're reacting, or someone who might be older who has dementia. They don't they don't pick it up quickly while they're asking questions and saying, "You need to pay attention. You need to talk." And and they it helps them to pull back and go, "Wait a minute, something else is going on here." Let me try Not only a different does it route. teach you about that, but it teaches you how to deal with a person who has a mental health disorder when yep. you come across them and they are in their moment, so to speak. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that's what NAMI does. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's, I got to be honest with you, that's new on me. I've never heard of that before. Well, look, look at, look, um, you can take the classes. They, they're free or cost next to nothing. Some offer these classes like at certain times of the year, depending on where you're at. But yeah, you should have, if you don't, then you need to advocate for one in your area, but you can take these classes for free. It just helps you to better understand and in some ways really even recognize things in yourself. Well, I've, I've been seeing a therapist once a week for the past four months, so. <laughs> I think that's I, that's I, you. It doesn't hurt to have a little more, you know, a little more knowledge about it. Oh, no, I get it. I get it. Believe me, I get it. Um, uh, af after some of these people I've been dealing with on some of these lives, I probably need to call and get me a new new therapist. I'm telling you. <laughs> I got you. I got you. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about. Oh, and one more thing before I pop out of here, we're going to talk about this a little more in depth, probably Friday evening. You guys know that the um our our, our um our national budget was exceeded in January. Yes. You may also know that um, the Biden administration put out a budget uh, beginning of this month, beginning of, of March. Mm -hmm. Here's what we want to do. Here's what we want to spend. We're now almost 30 days into it, and the GOP has suggested nothing. Well, that's, T, that's not entirely true. The freedom well, is has put out their proposed budget plan. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And and if you haven't seen that yet, it's horrifying. It's horrifying. But here's cut what I'm Social thinking. Security, cut Medicaid, cut disability, all that stuff. But here's what I want my Republican friends to understand. They could have just as easily taken the administration's budget, given it to some interns, given them a red marker and said, hey, y'all go through, edit this, find what you think we could agree with or we could negotiate for, bring it back to us, and then we'll go out to the public and say, here's the Biden budget. We don't want this. We don't want this, but we're willing to negotiate this, this, and this. The Biden budget, the government budget that was released early March. I just don't understand. They haven't done it. T, what I, what I just don't understand, and I'll probably never understand it, you know, they raised the debt ceiling three times under Donald Trump and exploded the debt by $7 trillion. Yep. Um, yep. That, none of that was an issue for them. Yet now they want to sit here and try to hold it hostage. It may seem like July is a long way away before it the default, but it's right around the corner. It is indeed. And they oh, hey, Dufo, Dufo, hold, on, hold on a minute, um, Swerve. Hey, Dufo, I've actually sent a message to TikTok to start tracking IP addresses of trolls. Yeah, that oh, you notice some of these um people lost the warnings off their accounts, right? 
One of the suggestions that I sent in is a warning should not hold longer than 90 days if you do not get any CV violations <coughs> after that. Right here. And warnings are gone. Mm. That's what they do. 90 days and they go away. They're no longer held against you. Yep. So trolls, come on, baby. I'm inviting them to track your IP. Somebody Sorry, said swear. Republicans and what do Republicans and prayers have in common? They're useless. <laughs> useless. I'm sorry, Swerve. Didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, you're fine. You're fine, T. Um I don't I don't know. I just I just don't know where we go from here. And I'm I'm gonna tell you this we talked about this a few weeks ago. It's not the first time, and sadly, it is not going to be the last time. That boy, we that chaplain, I'm sorry, I thought you were done. That <laughs> chaplain, boy, he got them all good today. The, oh, the, yes. the chaplain. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry, Swerve. No, you're fine. You're fine. You're good. I apologize for those birds, but Dawn and I are trying to figure out where the hell they are right now, to be honest with you. It's time to nest soon. <laughs> yeah, but not this close to my damn porch. They have to be a yeah. right now, as close as they are. But listen, T, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here for the night. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. Remember, I always come here for the tea and not the Kool-Aid. And hopefully I can help put you put a little bit of sugar in that tea from time to time. So uh, thank you uh, very much. I'm and to get... those of you who want to bring up 2A, I'm a gun owner. Right. So I have I'm... no problem with 2A. So am I. They act like they're the only ones. So they act like I mean, they're really. the ones that own firearms and they're the only ones that have uh, jobs. That I fi I always find that hilarious. But yeah. Anyway, yeah. let me get myself out here. Wolf, always a pleasure. T, I will you see too. you. You have a great evening. Everyone be safe. Have fun while you're doing it. And I wish you all a good night, everybody. All right. Night, night. Bye bye. <laughs> Oh, uh, Lady Blind Wolf, thank you so much for popping in. I try to keep okay. this short, but I see I've already gone over an hour. Oh, my God. Well, I was in another live waiting to speak, and that other live is absolutely pointless. So I should have just come in here instead. I just. But People thank you so much. I greatly appreciate you popping no in. No problem. No problem. You have a good evening. You too. I'll be back tomorrow night. We gotta talk about the budget tomorrow night. So y'all bring some information because I'm sick. I mean, I don't run my house this way. I don't know about y'all. I don't wait till my budget's about to expire to know how much money I need and what the heck I'm gonna do. I don't know about y'all, but I don't. But we're going to talk about the budget tomorrow night, okay? Y'all have a good evening. Remember, trust the tea, not the Kool-Aid. Uh, you can look me up over in Spotify. Please, people, come on over to Spotify. We're going to have a look. You can watch some of the videos. Leave a comment. Uh, yeah, we, we're, we're about done with this. We've had enough of this bullshit. Uh, fuck Joe Biden. Nobody cares about Joe Biden. Okay? Fuck Joe Biden. You're not special with that. But anyway, y'all have a good evening. Be well. Look me up. Spotify. Conversation. Tea time with tea. Bye, guys. <laughs>